everybody. Coming at you from out in the wilderness. I got the sun hit me. And <laughs> behind the camera we have, Hello. we have Nick. Now, today is going to be very, very interesting. I guarantee you, 100% guarantee you, you're going to see some stuff in this video you've never seen before. All right. Now, it is mastering the one tool fire. What is the one tool fire? It's where you have one tool and you make the fire start to finish. Okay. Um, some of you may be like, why would you only have one tool? Uh, why do you have to do it all with one tool? Can't you just pick stuff off the ground? Uh, can't you find just leaves or pine straw? Well, we're going to get into the, the ideology of that. And I'll pose the question this way, because there's a lot of people, that, a lot of times, that they won't even pay any attention to what I say. <clears throat> Instead, they'll just throw out a comment of, I always do this, or I always do that. But that's where I'm going to pose this to you. Uh, if you had some sort of a sickness or illness or disease, would you want to know one cure or one medicine? Or would you rather know 20 or 30 medicines? Get my point? Same thing with fire. No matter who you are, doesn't matter if you're a hiker, a camper, survivalist, or a bushcrafter, you need to know 20, 30, 40 methods of making fire because all situations are different. All environments are different. The season's different. Everything's different. Conditions are different. Okay? So, enough yakking and yammering. Let's dump this pack out and get straight to the nuts and bolts of the one tool fire. All right? You ready, Nick? I'm ready. All right. All right, let's dig in here and take a look and see what we're going to talk about today. Let's throw, as always, I have a nice little mat. This thing, it helps for everything. So let's pull this stuff out. And what we're going to be using today is we're going to be doing my favorite method, and that's with a machete. I'm not going to pull this knife out. I'm just going to use the machete. That's a Columbia River knife and tool. Um, it's called Chance and Hell Machete. Let's go ahead and get it out. What a nice name. Yeah. There you go. All right, we're going to be doing one fire with that. Pretty epic name, I want to say. Yeah. Let's see. We're going to have a shovel for clearing out an area. And then we're going to have, this is a council tool hatchet. Okay. Mm. Right, that's going to be a fire. A yeah, beautiful handle. And then this bag right here we have, let's just dump all this out. I don't even remember what all's in here. Let's put all this stuff back in here. All right, I have a silky saw. I have a silky saw, and then I have a Baco Laflander. Okay, so I'm going to use that, but I'm going to talk about that. So we're going to do one fire with this, one fire with this, and one fire with this. All right. Now, like I said, a lot of people are going to be like, "Why don't you just, you know, pine straw? Why don't you just pick up some pine straw? Why don't you just pick up some leaves?" Well, okay, we're going to. We're going to get into that. That's going to be next. Let's move these out of the way. And let's get into my explanation as to why it's a good idea for you to know these things. All right? I'm already kind of... Uh, Interesting. I'm already, I'm already thinking I wouldn't take a saw. Well, But I can't. I wouldn't be able to decide between the axe and the machete. <laughs> well, well, you're right. But believe it or not, the saw, you're going to, you're going to freak out. You actually haven't seen this method with the saw, Nick. You're, you're going to love this. <laughs> I'm telling you. How do you make gonna... wood curls with a saw? Uh, you'll see. <laughs> okay. The explanation as to why I'll be showing these methods is you got to know, the, I hope you know the basics of the fire, but I'm going to kind of explain to you as they are classified by most bushcrafters. I don't know how survivalists or campers look at it, but most bushcrafters look at it this way. There's tinder, kindling, and fuel, okay? Now, tinder is anything that will take a spark, all right? Sure wish uh, there's a example of all these things. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> well, Where those come me, from? First, let me explain this. A spark or an ember, okay? A spark usually comes from a ferro rod or flint and steel or it comes from, or, or an ember comes from a hand drill or a bow drill, all right? And then you have a flame. A flame is either a match or a lighter, all right? 
So those are the two sources of ignition, either a spark or a flame, okay? This thing right here, a ferro rod, you're guaranteed a spark, but you're not guaranteed a flame. With a lighter, you're almost guaranteed a flame, unless it's like below freezing. Now, the classifications for tender, this is tender. Now, tender will accept a spark, and it will turn a spark into a flame. Okay, that's how you classify tender. Okay, it's all over the place. You got dried leaves, you got pine straw, you got dead grass or weeds, you got cattail tops, that cattail fluff, you've got like cedar bark, you can take it and you can mash it up and rub it together. Those are some examples of tender because these will take an ember from a hand drill or a bow drill or they will take a spark from a ferro rod and turn it into flame. Okay, tender, kindling, fuel. Kindling is either very, very small sticks, smaller diameter than a pencil, or if you've chopped up a bunch of wood, baton wood, split wood into small pieces. Now, the idea behind the difference between kindling and fuel is kindling will accept a flame in 10 seconds. In other words, if you have an open flame, and it takes it within 10 seconds, it's considered kindling. If you put a flame on it and it won't take it in 10 seconds, it's considered fuel. Okay, does that make sense? And see, the, anything larger, the larger stuff is considered fuel. Okay, tender, kindling, fuel. All right, turns a spark into a flame, accepts a flame within 10 seconds, and then everything else is fuel. All right, now, does that make sense, Nick? Yeah. Okay. Now, with that said, there's a lot of conditions that you're not going to find any of this stuff here dry. None of this stuff. Okay. So, there's ways of processing wood, and it's great if you've got a knife and a machete, or a knife and a saw, or a saw and an axe and a knife. But we're going to, this, I'm using one tool on each technique to show you some of the different methods because like I said a lot of you are going to say well I do it this way or I do it that way this video is to show you different ways of doing it okay and try to keep it in your old noggin now the saw method is going to blow your mind all right you don't get that one huh I don't get that one you're going to get it you're going to love it now the machete method I'm going to save for last because regular viewers have seen it a million times so what we're going to do is we're just going to start out with the axe I mean the hatchet all right, and we're gonna we're gonna do that because uh, I'm gonna show you something. There's several different ways of doing it. So uh, let's go over here and find a tree and get a couple pieces, and I'm gonna get a couple examples, and we're gonna see if we can't get a fire going. All right, sound good? Sound good. All right. So the top of a tree laying on the ground there, and what I did is I chopped a branch off of it. Now, if you chop on a lot of times, if you chop on things that are just laying on the ground. They'll bounce too much. You want to try to find a solid surface to chop on. So now the first thing that I'm going to do is whatever I can take off by hand, all these little bitty twigs here, that's what I'm going to be putting over my initial flame. Now we're going to try, you could probably, if you had a lighter or a candle, you could probably catch this stuff on fire. But we're going to try to see what we can do with a spark. So once that's done, we're going to take this log here and we're going to chop everything up. A lot of times, instead of chopping, oh, there it goes. A lot of times when you're chopping, stuff flies all over the place. And so I'll probably gather all this stuff. But if you chop on the top of a log, that's fine. But sometimes if you can chop over here on this side, it's a lot better because there's less of a chance of it coming back towards you. This log's pretty rotten. It's best recommended to have your cameraman staying away so all the wood that's flying off in the other direction hits that person instead. Yeah. That way you don't have to go find it. That is true. But anytime you got a good solid surface, that always helps. I've chosen, I, 
I'll have to go pick all that up in a minute. I think that's enough for now. Well, I'll do this last one. Alright, that's enough for now. We may not even need it all. Alright, now, the next part of it, I'm going to show you how to actually make the tender version of this. And this don't always work, so I've chosen three different branches that we're going to try to work with. And it may or may not work. I may have to use all three of them, or the first one I choose may work. I don't know, but we're fixing to find out. I'm going to show you the method. In three different pieces of wood, and I'm not real sure which one's going to work, but you just want something that's kind of dead and dry if possible. So what you want to do, I'm going to try to get myself a little flat spot here to work. That's some pretty soft wood right there. I hope it don't. Yeah, that's a very, very mushy wood. All right, so you want to hold the stick like this. And what you want to do is you want to just start chopping on the end of it. You want to give it just a few chops. Okay, now maybe this is going to work. All right, maybe that's going to work. I can't tell from the filming. I'm sitting on the log that I'm filming. <laughs> hey, he's chopping on you can't Let's tell see. or you can tell? If you see the camera vibrating. Okay, now see how I did that? So the next thing you want to do is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it on this or not. I may have to do it on an actual tree, and hopefully it won't hurt the bark. But anyway, we're going to see. Yeah, this ain't working good. We're going to have to actually put it against a tree, which I don't like doing. But all these trees on the ground are rotten. Let's walk over here. Follow me over here, man. Put it right here. You ready? Alright, it mashed the bark in, but it didn't remove it, so let's move down a little. Alright, and let's move over to another tree. We don't want damage all of them. Alright. Now that may or may not work. I feel like it will. Alright, so let's take this and see if we can get it to take a ferro rod spark. Alright. Get down to go. Now, I'm not going to let this fire grow, but I'm going to try to at least get it to where the the, uh, the flames will sustain this steel. Because since we're not going to use this fire, I'm not going to get out of control with it. All right, now there's the thing. So we want to set it. Let's set it on this rock. And then let's get our kindling right here handy. Right. Now, let's take a ferro rod and see. Let's turn this upstream. Now let's turn this rock the other way. Look at that. Now this is going to take a shower of sparks. Now this may or may not work. I may wind up having to use a flame. But I would like to try to do it this way. I got it glowing. If you ever get a flame, you want to pick it up. It's all a bit of a flame. Yeah. Still. flip it over we may have to use a different kind of stick it may be the type of wood this don't work with all wood I 
there it goes. That was a little bit of a flame. We lost it. Alright. I think you just gotta be real quick with it. Yeah. Well this stuff needs to be thinner. The problem is is with it's thinner, with it thinner it may it may uh it may fall off. Let's take it back up there and try to pre prepare it again and then we'll we'll do it again. Alright, I'll bring it back. So I smashed this thing up again and that's what it looks like. Now some of you are saying you're probably gonna say, matter of fact I know some of you are gonna say, well, why don't you just take and make curls with your axe? Well not everybody's axe or hatchet is sharp enough to make curls. Excuse me, sorry. Do not. So that's why I'm showing this other method. Yes, you can make curls, and we may have to resort to that, but I, I want to try to get this to work, because this does work. It's not an easy method, but it does work. All right, so let's try this again. I'm going to try to get it right as close as you can. Give it a shower. Oh, now I got a flame. Oh, I got a flame. Now, very gently, you want to turn it up. You want to turn it up. Okay, it worked. Hey. Okay, okay now it worked. All right, and so, now, next thing you want to do is you want to lay down a stick. Is not screw up. Yeah, not screw up. Now, it's going to take a minute. You want to hold it upside down to let everything catch. All the wind is blowing. Let me hide it over here by this rock. I got my flame, so if it goes out, it's the wood's fault. <laughs> it ain't my fault. You want to get it to where it's good and sustainable. So let's turn it this way. I'm fixing to lose it. Oh no, I think no, I No, don't am. lose it. It's supposed to be fun in the woods, not Rage in the woods. I lost it. Uh, I think it's well, from the wind blowing. Uh, like Great. Right. I wonder if I could. Well, it's still. What? Let's shower it again. I might, maybe I should have just went ahead while uh -huh. I had flame. That might have been my stupidity. Let's see if we can go ahead and get another flame in here. It's still glowing. Uh, got some yeah, water. I think once you had a flame, you should have. I should have started working with it. You should have. Yeah, you should have had your fire already ready to go, and I would think that you have your fire already built up. You have it ready to go, ready to light, and you just stick it. Once you got that lit up, you just stick it right down the middle. Let it catch everything else. Oh, great. It's going to make me look bad. Yeah, this may be, like I said, maybe the, wood, the wood's fault. See, uh, it's got a flame. Or, well, it did. No, it still does. I see a flame. It's on the back side of it. Yeah, once you get that flame, you need to work fast with it to get your fire started. Yes. This is what you need to do. This is what I should have done the first time. That wouldn't look so bad. Yeah. Because you don't have what much... What are you doing? Do you even know what you're doing? Oh, my God. Some people think I don't. <laughs> How is that still sparkling? That's because I use such a giant ferro rod. No, I mean, that little piece left on the rock over there was still sparking, actually. Oh, I know. Not a flame, oh, but Oh, look spark. at that. I just saved it. It just, it was fixing to go out. But see, now, when you get enough stuff on there... All right. Now, instead of giving up and going to the other two pieces that I cut, I went ahead and tried it. Even though I look bad... You look very bad. Well, I don't mind looking bad because this is all, this is reality. This is a, this is a learning lesson. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show y'all, and I'm not going to make it look like it's easy, because it's not, but it works. And so I haven't even blown on it much. And see, at this point, you see those flames? Now, people that are experienced with a ferro rod, you're not going to take anything like this and get that to catch on fire. But you can smash the end of a dry stick. Okay? You can smash the end of a dry stick. And see, now I can take all this stuff over here that I chopped and I can put it all around it and we can have us a good fire. Alright? Mm -hmm. So, I think I proved my point now. This ain't going to go out. And so at this point, like I said, you just put the big stuff around it and you're good to go. Okay, so that is, <clears throat> that is the smash fire. And you could also, um, let's see, let me grab one of these. Just out of curiosity, let's see if my axe is sharp enough, because I know people's going to say, well, why don't you make shavings? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Homer Simpson. Well, so you can make shavings. <clears throat> yeah, you can make shavings too. And so you could have, if I made enough of those, if your axe is sharp enough or hatchet is sharp enough, you can do that and you can strike that with a ferro rod. Anyway, that is the smash fire. The one tool hatchet smash fire. And that is more than sustaining. Now let's do the saw fire. <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> okay. But once again, with this, with just, just a folding saw and just a ferro rod, wood selection is everything. Okay. Uh, if you use hardwood, certain types of dry hardwood, some work, some don't. So we're going to be looking for a dead down pine tree. Fat wood, fat light or pine lighter. All right. And I think I got one that's going to work. So you ready to ease over that way, Nick? All right. All righty. Real quick, like I want to show you something here. This is a Baco Laplander. And this has just got a traditional, traditional blade on it where the teeth are set. It means one's bent that way, one's bent that way, that way, that way, that way. Now with this one, you pull back and forth and it'll saw. This thing makes a little bit more dust than it does chips. This is a silky gone boy. It has what's called a Japanese pruning grind or a Japanese grind. And what that is, is the teeth only cut on the pull stroke. They don't cut on the push stroke. Now the difference between these two is this makes more dust, this makes more chips. Now, if you're going to strike it with a ferro rod, chips light better than dust. Because dust, if you light it, the top will burn, and you'll have to agitate it to get it keep burning. This usually will just burn through and through. Okay, with that said, we're going to use this. Now, check this out. I want you to film this because this is not staged. This is something that you can really do, okay? I did not stage this. This is raw footage, raw. unplanned raw real footage okay now i want you to look at this tree okay take a peek here at this tree this thing has been here for years okay mm -hmm. what this is, is this look is at a, that yeah this is a dead down pine tree okay mm -hmm. so what we are going to do is i'm going to try to lift this thing up if i can nope it's underneath that tree all right well let's try something else <laughs> Okay, got a massive raw, unfiltered raw footage. footage. Yeah, let me see. Mm -hmm. this thing right here. Yeah. So what I'm going to do. No way we could have brought this out here and thrown it down here and covered in pine straw and vines. No, I couldn't have. And I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have gone to this much trouble. Okay, so let's clear out a spot underneath here on both sides. All right. Now, let's say I'm a hiker. And I need a fire, and I have oh, a folding saw. There's a bit of a nest in that. Yeah, there is. Oh, I don't know if that's visible. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is. 
Well, we ain't going to take much of the tree. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do, if this gets out of hand, we're going to have to go find another piece. Okay, right, now you know we, we didn't put it there because there's a nest in it. That's right. Okay, we've got a map of the state of Tennessee. Alright. This is one of those free maps. Look, there's a governor of Tennessee from the governor. Oh, yeah. Bill Lee. From the governor. <laughs> Thank you, governor. All right, so we're, <laughs> we're going to put this map underneath here. If we can. If we can. And now what we're going to do is we're going to saw. Oh, you have some ants on your map. Yeah, I know. This is going to be bad. That'll be free protein. All right, we're going to go almost through, and then we're going to come over here. Right here. Sawing and just catching the shavings down there. Yeah. But did you notice what I did? All right, now I'm going to hold this and hope I don't get bit by ants. I hear a popping and crackling. Look at that. Oh. I'm trying not to knock everything everywhere. Well, time to find out how ants are flammable. Yeah. All right, then we're going to... I know. And then we're going to cut into the side here. That ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have to stomp on it. I think I like the axe better. <laughs> no, you'll like this better. I think I like the axe better. So we have a disc. Okay. Alright, everybody, how old's this tree? Now we're gonna take this and hope we don't get ant bit. Hope we don't dump it. We're gonna go back to our fireside. All right, you can just keep the ant-filled map away from me. All right. Rather not All right, be... so the next thing you want to do is you want to find some kind of branch of some kind. It doesn't even matter if it's rotten. It does not matter. It's ir irrelevant. You could saw it, or you can just break it into pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this into pieces. And I'll show you how we're going to use that. All right. Remember, rotten wood does not make good fires. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our map of Tennessee. And ants. And ants. And look, we're going to dump it. See all them shavings? We're going to dump them out right here on the ground. All right. Now, I wanted to dump them into a kind of a neater pile. All right, we got them in a pile. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this on each side like this. Can you see that from where you're sitting? Yeah. Okay, we've got a pile of dust and we've got this and we've got this. And then this is the disc we cut out to produce these. So what we want to do is break it in half. Hey, look, that's even better. We'll break it into a bunch of pieces. So, you want to be able, you want to scoot these over to where you can set it here, and here, and here. Okay, so you're going to be ready for it. Now let's take a ferro rod. Let's see if we can strike this thing. Now, a lot of times it helps. A lot of people, there's a bunch of different methods. I always have people saying you shouldn't strike down. That they're saying that you should pull the ferro rod up. It really doesn't matter. Do it either way you want to do it. Uh, you're pulling it up, it feels like there's zero chance of you actually uh, slipping and knocking everything everywhere. Yeah, it does, but I just, I've gotten used to doing it this way. I've got a horrible habit of just flinging it everywhere. Let me move this stuff out of the way. I'll put it back in a minute. Oh, 
Oh, I had it flying, but I put it out. There it goes. See that? And once you get a flame, you want to kind of agitate this stuff around a little bit. And hope that wow, the wind. that pine smells really good. Instead mm. of more, the wind blew it out. I can't believe we did, we're doing this on such a windy day. I think it's just because Georgia mountains were up higher. Could be. Now this may take a minute. But what you want to do is you just want to sit there now. The sticks have it blocked from the wind. The dust is fueling the fire, and the fire should catch on to this because this is actual fat wood. Now you can blow on it at this point. I'm so to do it, but here's another piece of fat wood. And this is a piece that got sawed off and broken down the middle. So, all right, let's try this. Because I would love for this to be successful. Mm -hmm. So let's catch. I think the ants janked the other one. They may have. I don't know why it didn't work. It usually works. Maybe it did. You, you, did. you never know. I don't know. Maybe the wind blew it out. But I'm making some much thinner pieces here. into my there you go all right so we got three pieces here now stack those up let's take all these shavings let's pile it right on top man there's that wind again that wind is killing me well this one would have this one would have absolutely put it out if it was going. Yeah, it would have. Alright, let's try this again. Oh, now look at that. That's a richer concentration of fat wood. Mm. So now you just lay these on each side. And you allow that flame to come up through the hole. Now just watch, okay? Are you seeing that pretty good there? Yeah. Now you're going to watch a minute. Did you see how that almost instantly yeah, I worked caught a lot fire? More. That's what it should have looked like. I guess it's okay for you to see that. And I say you can't hardly see the flame, so you want to spread these out just a little bit more. Yeah, now look at that. It's almost like a natural. Oh, yeah, I think the sides caught. Something else caught. Oh yeah. Well, this is it. The flame kept dying to begin with. Now, a minute, you're going to see some black smoke coming off. Look at that. The wind's blowing. I feel like the fire is pretty good at this point. Yeah. 
I'd like to see that black smoke coming off though. But y'all saw how that was. Mm hmm. Can you see the black smoke coming off of it? I see that far fire right there is going to, at this point, I don't even think the wind's going to put it out. Oh yeah, you know that wood is on fire? Yeah, I know. Oh no! Forest fire. Out. Something else here. This stuff right here. Yeah, you, know, you might want to. You might want to move that back. Yeah, let's move it back. Burning a leaf there. Look at that. See at this point. Look at that. I <laughs> say at this point you can just pile all kinds of sticks on top, and it'll it'll go. It'll burn and burn and burn. All right, so that's that, and I don't understand why that other fat wood didn't work other than, other than it wasn't completely rotten yet. That has almost no smell to it. Maybe it wasn't fat wood. I know this was because it smelled like pine. No, that doesn't have a smell. Whatever. Well, <laughs> this is reality. But you can clearly see now, and can you see the black smoke coming off the top? Maybe. Well, let's try something else here, just for the heck of it. A little bit. You gonna find the map? Yeah, it's okay. No, oh. come on, watch this. Did you see that yet? Yeah. <laughs> I got startled with a bug on my leg. You can hear it too. So it's hard to put that out. There goes that black smoke. That's that resin in it. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is the saw fire. Uh, like I said, I didn't stage that. So sometimes these things don't work. But, you know, you have to practice and experiment with these things. All right, let's move on to the method that uh, I think a lot of you have seen. Some of you have, some of you hadn't. I don't know. All right, you ready for the machete fire? Oh yeah. All right. What we have here is a standing tree that has died. But since it's standing, it's it's not rotten. And I think it's funny, there's even a piece of uh, ball bar fence right over here. Which is funny. So we need to move that out All right, now with most of my machetes, let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and show, show you here. This is a... Uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool Chance and Hell Machete designed by Ken Onion. And this is all the factory grind, but down here I have put a 15 degree high polish grind on each side. It's just razor thin. But you're never going to be chopping here, you're going to be chopping out here. So that razor thin part's okay. So what we're going to do, look at that. We may can use that tree if this don't work. That's burnt. Yeah, it's burnt. This this was all burnt at one time, it looks like. You can see the black. Alright, so let's get some of this bark off. Let's actually see what this thing looks like. Oh, I was wondering, there was my coffee thermos back there. Word. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nick's coffee thermos. What, you think I come anywhere with that coffee? No, you don't. <laughs> That's well known. Alright, let's take this. This actually looks like some resin. Okay, now, I saw where that landed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put my cloth down here. This is this does not help that it's on a hill. But I'm going to try to catch what I can shave off of this thing. Most of them are landing on there. That is not, that's still good wood. That's not all dried out. Well, if you look at the top of it, it's not dead. Yeah. Now that's, 
There we go. Now I found some. Man, this is hard to stand here. That's what we're after. Alright, let's carry this with us. See that? Hmm. We make dead mm -hmm. dry wood. Let's see. I don't know. While we're here. I'm going to move this because I don't want to knock my stuff everywhere. But this is what we're going to be working with. That's what we're going to make our fire with. Just out of curiosity, let's go over here this side. See if I can do the same thing. You see, even if it's rained a lot recently, this stuff, this stuff could be dry because it's up off the ground. All right, let's see if I can take a stance. I don't think that's completely dead. You see my knuckles? Yeah. Last time I did this with a machete, people was like, oh, you're going to get cut. Well, that's what you do. Use a palm of your hand. Now, I'm going to pick up some of those curls down there. We got another little bit of one. Mm -hmm. This ain't as much, so I'll hold this over my initial flame. All right. Now we don't want to waste any of these curls. So these are, we're gonna pick all these up. Don't waste nothing. All right, so let's head back to our fire pit. Uh, all stuff, you know, you can just you can find this stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna break it up, just like this. That'll be the, the kindling for the fuel. Then you can just take your machete and just chop it all up. All right. Now, okay, so we got that. Now let's look at this stuff and see what we can do. Let's dump it all out right here on the ground. Let's take this, set it here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of the ugly stuff on the bottom. Now with this, you gotta work fast because these curls burn up quick. So, you ready? Mm -hmm. They do rag and tails are too long. Let's set this on top. This seems to be finer. There we go. All right, once you see your first flame, which I did and it went away, I don't know the condition of that tree, how rotten or dead or alive it is. 
Oh, the top of it was full of green leaves. I might be barking up the wrong tree. There we go, we got a flame on this side. Whew, God, I got hot. All right, so now you just start putting all this on. And there you go. Now this is the point where you have to start working fast. This is where you put all the small stuff that you broke up. And then it should be a pretty good sustainable fire. Now you can make a lot more shavings than what I did and be very successful. All right. Now that's the easy method. Now I want to say something about some of the other failures that I had and the trouble I had. Told you the saw was a bad idea. Well, no, no. If you'd have had a lighter with an open flame, I think they all would have worked a lot better. But I was trying to do it with a spark, with a ferro rod. Now see, that's pretty sustainable right now. Now at this point, you could put this bigger stuff on. Um, Ain't they can lighter or plasma lighter? Well, plasma lighter is a spark. See, that's more than sustainable now. You're not going to put that out. And then you just start piling on all the bigger stuff. Hey, I want to try something right here. You thinking maybe sometime we can test the differences? Different woods. What is well, starting a fire? Well, the problem is, is all the wood. What's the better, wood. a plasma lighter or a regular lighter? Oh, got to be a regular lighter. Just oh, out of a curiosity. plasma lighter will light stuff pretty fast. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, let me try something here. Because that wood, I don't know. That being a split tree, I'm not real sure about it. Like I said, I've got, with the plasma lighter, you won't run out of fuel with carrying one of the smaller solar panels backpacking like I have. Right. Let's just make some shavings off of a, another piece of wood. Let's see how, how they'll strike. I might have been, like I said, I might have been barking up the wrong tree by using what I used. No, yeah, it started faster than the saw fire. Well, the second time with the other fat wood, it started. All right, let's try this one. Now, everything that fell off right here is what I'm going to add to it once I get a flame. Let's move this over. We'll pour water all over this when we get done. All right, so let's try this. Let's say once you did this, once you did this, you could uh, pile twigs all around it like I just did. Let Let's just go ahead and put all this on it. So that there's more stuff to catch a flying. Every now and then the smoke comes straight at me and I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, really? <laughs> Let me move. Uh. There we go. Look at that. Now that went up with a lot less effort. Mm. 
That must have still had, you say there was green leaves at the top of that? Yeah, I showed it on camera. Top of the tree's green. I guess we're lucky to even get that to light, but that's more like how it should look. And then, like I say, you just put, you know. That's you not wanna, burning slow like the, the oh, light yeah, tree was. Oh yeah, fast. It? But see, you'll have a bunch of little tiny things and you'll just throw it all on top. You know, you'll be prepared. Hmm. Be prepared before you do your first spark. Hmm. All right? Yeah. So that's, that's that thing right there. You should, the live tree, it's, it's uh, curls. It burned a lot slower, but it was harder to get going. Yep. So it lasted longer than that because that's already out. And see, there's a thing. There's a thing called flame working time. And what that is is... Once your spark turns into a flame, how quick your tinder burns up compared to how it catches your kindling. And that's called flame working time. This flame working time was longer. It allowed you more time to put the kindling on. That burn up fast. That's why cattail is the world's worst. That stuff will burn up super fast. Super fast. I'm like trying to start a fire with leaves and pine straw. Yeah, they work. <laughs> Why, do you want to try a handful? Well, I mean, it'll probably go. I don't know, let's see. It's just still burn very fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that flame work. And that's why I don't like this kind of stuff. Because the flame working time is so so fast. It's not really enough to actually catch wood on fire. Yeah. Any wood, really. that out even faster. Huh? They say you don't get real big flames. Nah. That's why I don't like leaves. See, it's already gone. Compared to how long the other took. Alright, that about does it. Alright, so that's that. That's your 3-1 tool fires. Now, I probably could have staged everything a little better and made it look easier and made myself look better. But, you know, I kind of wanted to show it like it is. So, your chore is to go out and try these things and see how good or bad they work and see what it takes when you're actually out here trying to choose materials that are out here. All right. So but anyway, that's that. It's a little something for the old toolbox. Like I said, instead of knowing one method, it's good to know 20, 30, 40 methods. All right. Anything you want to add, Nick? I would probably... I might would go for the axe. You would, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and, uh, you know, when, people, when the camera's not on, you can just smash things against trees. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Or if you can find a good big down tree. There's not none around here, but I've seen some oak trees this big around before, and I've literally, I've on that smash fire, I have obliterated, like it was a red oak. I mean, I have obliterated the end of... Of sticks before where it took like two strikes of a ferro rod and it was on fire. The thinner and more smashed and flattened out you can get, the better off you are, but you gotta have a good surface. You could beat on the back of a rock, but I don't, I ain't beating on the back of a rock mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can help it. I might one time to try to get a spark off the back of the axe, but I ain't gonna do it a bunch of times. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a few things. You have your methods, I have mine. Uh, this stuff works. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes you have to kind of struggle with it. But, you know, in nature, everything's not, not, not a given. Sometimes you have to work for things, and there's always variables. <laughs> so take it easy. Enjoy life, and we shall. See you in the next one. See you later.